Welcome to European Business News, the first in a three-part series about how to improve efficiency and organisational profitability. Each week we will look at a different topic and starting this week with how to improve organisational effectiveness and ultimately profitability. I'm joined in the studio today with Dr Tony Miller, international author. He's written 13 books and productivity specialist. Welcome to the programme. Thank you. Dr T, you'll be with us for the series this week, starting with the tricky issue of, well, making organisations more successful. The technique we keep hearing about is right-sizing. So what is it and how does it work? Well, right-sizing is just another word for looking at an organisation and calculating or trying to get it to a size where it becomes efficient because organisations just get bigger and bigger and bigger over time. Why do organisations get out of shape in the first place? Well, that's a very good question and it, it's, the answer lies in, in history really. Organisations were designed way back in uh, about 1760 by a man called Adam Smith. And Adam Smith's idea of organisations was to create what's called a pyramidal organisation, uh, which was very convenient. And it was convenient and worked well in those days. But today it's just the dinosaur, really. Perhaps you could expand on why these have become such an issue. Well, because we're all looking to uh, improve productivity and efficiency. And at the, at the, the nub of the problem always seems to be the organisation itself. Hmm. So what's the big downside with this organisation type? Well, the downside is it's, it looks very convenient on paper, you know, this nice pyramidal uh, structure. The real issue is that managers tend to overstaff their own departments and grow their own departments. And the organisation almost takes on a life of its own. And the problem with this is you employ more and more people, but in effect, you actually do less work. So what sort of design do Google, Facebook and Microsoft use? Well, their design is very, very different. Um, back in the 50s, um, Shockley designed an organisation to produce high efficiency. And then he brought the people... Uh, or the organisation was designed to, to, to match a certain type of person. And he was very, very um, particular on how he did that. Then in the 70s, um, Bill Noyce, who worked for Shockley, then set up another organisation, which we would know as Intel, in Silicon Valley. And then along came Microsoft, Apple, uh, Google, Facebook, all of whom copied exactly the same organisational design, but it is very, very unique. It is designed specifically with a certain type of person in mind. You mentioned earlier about right-sizing. What's the new approach and how does it differ from the traditional method? Well, what we now do, we've, we've now changed the, the approach. In the old days, it used to be right-sizing, used to be just reducing staff by either voluntary redundancy um, or by stopping recruitment, which is very, very crude. Now we can mathematically calculate exactly how many people an organisation needs. We have three or four formulas we use to do that. And we can then, with a great deal of certainty, as a tabletop exercise, come up with the right number for the organisation. And we've just done this with uh, a number of organisations. The, the last one was an organisation of about 3,000. And by the time we'd finished the right-sizing exercise, as a tabletop exercise, we found that the organisation actually only needed 2,000 employees. Mm. In your book, Innovations, you cover this topic. Can you give a current example of the types of savings organisations can expect if they use right-sizing? Well, typically you're looking between 20 and 30% too many people. Now, it sounds a massive amount and you're probably thinking, well, how can an organisation make such a terrible mistake? But it just happens over time. So over time, the organisation, if you like, gets fatter and fatter and fatter. 
and right sizing is a good way of saying well this is the shape you really should be mm, so it, yes for that it is very clever it's very very clever and it's very straightforward so in the organization we've just uh, finished doing some work with they've saved a thousand people Ooh. so it's all down to applied mathematics it is it's mathematics mathematics and more mathematics mm. what other techniques would you recommend for organizations to become more effective well there are a number we would look at. First is business process re-engineering. There's a, a much better way of doing that now. And organisations can see massive returns on investment within about six months. Um, renegotiating contracts, which is something we're terrible at doing in the West, but um, the Asians are, are excellent at doing that, and there's big profits to be made by doing that correctly. And I think one of the, the biggest things, the biggest problems we come across is all, all caused by one common process, and that is bad recruitment. So if you can tackle bad recruitment, not only recruit talented people, then you're making a massive step forward. Mm, it's difficult finding the talented people though, isn't it? But what sort of benefit can the organisation who uses this really expect? Well, they can expect a huge amount of extra profitability. Now, in the private sector, uh, that's really, really important. In the public sector, you know, they're saving the taxpayers' money. Mm -hmm. So it should have a high priority as well. And I think if you look overall, you're probably talking of savings of about 30 35%. Mm, huge savings. And that concludes the first in our series. The next programme will examine the role of HR in today's modern business, where I shall be joined again by Dr Miller, Dr T. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you.